In fact, he demonstrates that. Look at 1 Timothy 4.10. In 1 Timothy 4.10, there's a most remarkable and somewhat disconcerting verse when you first read it because it's kind of hard to figure out. But it says in 1 Timothy 4.10, the living God, right in the middle of the verse, we fixed our hope on the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of believers. Boy, that, that has really created havoc in the minds of people. What do you mean God is the Savior of all men? Well, what is, in what way is God the Savior of all men? Well, we know this. We know He's not the Savior of all men spiritually and eternally, don't we? We know that because people go to hell, right? Jesus makes that clear when you find a rich man in torment. That's, that's a glimpse into that place. So we know He is not the Savior of all men spiritually and eternally. In what way is He the Savior of all men? Listen carefully. Physically and temporally. Physically and temporally. You say, how does that work? Well, He doesn't give the sinner what the sinner deserves the moment He deserves it. The fact that you're still here, you're still breathing, you're still alive is evidence that God is a saving God. He has temporally and physically delivered you from the wrath which should have fell the first time you violated His law. He's already demonstrated that He's a saving God. You've already seen His mercy. You've already seen that. Romans 2 said that forbearance of God, that patience of God by which He overlooks a transgression and waits and gives space to repentance should have led you to repentance. Romans 2, 4, and 5. God is a saving God and He's demonstrated it across the globe through all the history of humanity because He's delivered men temporally and physically from what they deserve, which was the instantaneous explosion of His just and righteous wrath. The world has had plenty of illustrations of how much a saving God he is. Then he adds, especially of believers, and he saves believers spiritually and eternally. Okay? But even when you look at the world as it is today, even when you look at this world and you see sinners running rampant all through the world, that's evidence of God's saving character. God said to Adam in the garden, you eat that fruit, you're going to die. He ate, guess what? He lived. He lived. He didn't die the day he ate. Seeds of death were planted, but God showed himself a saving God, didn't he? And he immediately put in place a saving plan, didn't he? Right in the same chapter where you have the fall, in verse 15, God promises there's going to come a seed that's going to bruise the serpent's head. Redemption is on the way. God, by nature, is a saving God. You find him in the garden. He's not off somewhere having Adam wandering around the garden saying, Where are you, God? Where are you, God? No, it's God wandering around the garden saying, Where are you, Adam? Where are you, Adam? Son of man has come to what? Seek and save. God does the seeking. From Genesis 3, 8 and 9 on, God has been seeking the lost. Ezekiel 34, 16, I will seek the lost, bring back the scattered, bind up the broken, and strengthen the sick. Man is lost and not seeking. God is seeking. No man seeks after God. Luke 15, three parables. Lost sheep, lost coin, lost sons. In every case, there's a search. And when what is lost is found, all of heaven rejoices. Why does all of heaven rejoice? Because they know how precious that is to the heart of God, right? The lost coin is like a sinner that repents. The lost sheep is like a sinner that repents. The lost son is like a sinner that repents. And it causes a party in heaven because it's so dear to the heart of God. God is a saving God by nature. We're not trying to appease him. He's a saving God by nature. And you see it in the demonstration when the guy finally got up in the middle of the pigsty eating the pig slop and says, I'll go home. And he runs. And what happens? He gets near his house and his father, who's an old man, runs. Runs when he sees him coming. Throws his arms around him, kisses him, calls for a robe to be put on the most beautiful ring of feast. And that's God. That father is God. That's the saving nature of God. Running to the repentant sinner, throwing his arms around that sinner and lavishing blessing on that sinner. It's his nature. It's his nature. And he says to the sinner, it's just what he said to the son, all that I have is yours. He seeks the reprobate. He seeks the wicked. He seeks the outcast as well as the respectable and uh, outwardly religious. 